KO here. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila, where we are working to inspire positive, radical social evolution by uniting mission-driven humans. This is an awesome conversation today. It's entitled Dear Single Moms. I'm welcoming Vicki Severson to the TNT mic. She has an incredible background from being a teen mom to a model, a sports radio personality, a paranormal investigator, a tornado chaser, but like I said, most importantly, a mom. And she's the founder of Buckshot Media. They are doing big things with big names, including Duck Dynasty and Black Rifle Coffee. But this is really about chasing the dream, being resilient, stepping into really hard space and facing fear, and really making tough decisions and being a leader uh, when the world's kind of against you and society tells you otherwise. So for anyone out there that's maybe in a tough spot, looking to make the right step in the right direction, this is a conversation for you. It's a really powerful, incredible conversation, and Vicki is packed with good words. Check this out. I'll have this on YouTube. Listen to us wherever you get your podcasts, and we will be seeing you soon for this podcast. Cheers. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Questioning a better way, one gracefully disruptive conversation at a time. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. I'm so excited to be here today. I have a connective, a connect, and if you know and listen to Turmeric and Tequila, these are my favorite. This is actually from my pod fam, or excuse me, my fit fam, uh, my fellow CrossFitter. Shout out to Mark Leffling. We, I love when he's at the gym because we always are, when it's business time and it's three, two, one, go, we go hard, but usually we're like joking around and things aren't too serious prior to that point. So I enjoy when Mark's around. So when Mark and I were talking, he's like, you got to interview my girlfriend, get her on your podcast. She's had this amazing journey. So I'm excited to welcome Vicki Severson to the TNT mic. Vicki, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm super stoked to be here. Um, I was checking out your podcast and I love your whole mission, everything that I've heard about you. Um, and so I'm definitely honored to be here. Thank you. I'm so excited. I know Mark gets the gym version. So I always, I'm, it's, it's good when it's positive feedback because you never know it's early in the morning. You know, you're not, you're barely showered. You're just kind of there and ready to sweat. So it's a different version of ourselves. So I'm glad those are positive reviews. Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. We had a lot of great things to say about the podcast and you and just thought that we would totally get it off. So I'm excited. I, I love it. Yes. Well, on that note, I want to jump in with Vicky's background. I don't usually read a ton, but I want to just because she covers so many boxes and we're just going to jump right in with her journey. But she's deeply passionate about um, women and single moms. This po- podcast is going to be called Dear Single Moms. But without further ado, I'm just going to give you the background um, because it's so deeply impressive. Vicky was a teen mom who turned her tragedy into triumph and took on the world to create her own path. This path has been an eclectic one. Vicky's experience runs from banking, EMT, a journalist, a model, a sports radio personality, a paranormal investigator, and a tornado chaser, but most importantly, a mom. Currently, Vicky is a successful business owner and founder of Buckshot Media. Vicky oh. produces a reality show for the Sportsman Channel with names such as Duck Dynasty and Black Rifle Coffee. Vicky's goal is to hire a team of single moms to run her company, Buckshot shot media in order to show them their worth and capabilities and give them the foundation to chase their dreams. Vicky is also a survivor of domestic violence and is writing a course to help women escape abusive relationships and rebuild their lives from scratch as she has on her multiple occasions. I want to show all of these women who don't see their worth that you can build from a pile of ash. You can have nothing and make something beautiful and, and successful when you believe there are no limits. Vicky. Uh, powerful, powerful words. Um, I want so much, so many angles to start on here, but why don't you just give us like kind of the beginning in your longer bio you sent to me, you, you had like this pivot point when you were looking down at your baby girl and you were, you were leaving the hospital. Definitely. So, um, I remember sitting there, uh, they wheeled in my little girl who had just been born. Um, I had just turned 18 two weeks prior. And so, um, they, they wheeled her in the room and I was sitting there by myself and I was watching all these other families and they were, you know, packing up their babies to take home. And it was mom and dad. And I, I wanted to feel like a victim. Mm -hmm. Um, that was my first reaction was to feel like, oh, you know, poor me and poor Kimberly, my little baby girl. Um, you know, I have none of this to offer her, but something switched in me in that moment. Um, I feel like we have a point in life where we hit and we just, we either bounce up or we don't go anywhere. And at that point I bounced up and I just, uh, I picked her up and I said, 
we, we will not be victims just because I'm a teen mom, just because I'm a single mom. That doesn't mean that I can't still give you the life that you deserve. And so in that moment, I decided that there would be no victim mentality. There would be no limitations. Um, And so that was sort of my mindset from that point on, as far as I wanted her to be able to grow up and be proud of her mom. That's pretty amazing. I'm very big into uh, personal evolution. I've done lots of life coaching and therapists and like, you name it. I'm very into like human optimization in general, physically, mentally. And we're kind of like this evolving work in progress, but to to even have an awareness of victim mentality as a 17, 18 year old is pretty remarkable. Did you have some like mindset training or was this just like innately something in you or like, where, like, cause victim mentality, I think I learned that, you know, at my, in my thirties of understanding what's going on. Like these are really evolved conversations for a young person. Well, thank you. Um, certainly I didn't have a name for it. Um, I was, you know, I didn't have any type of therapy or anything like that at that point. I can't really tell you where it came from other than I think just becoming a mother to me was, uh, the pivotal moment in my life. And so I would say prior to that, I did sort of maintain what you would call, what I would call and put name to now as a victim mentality. And it was sort of like, oh, you know, I'm not in the popular crowd or I'm not this, I'm not that. Um, And I felt unworthy. And I remember being pregnant with her and I had to go sign up for welfare and standing in line. And I wouldn't look anyone in the eye. Um, You know, it was like, I felt completely worthless. I could feel their stares. I could feel their judgment, but for some reason, having this new human life that I was responsible for completely just changed my mindset to be, if I'm a victim, she's a victim. And I think I realized I refuse for her to be a victim. So I think that's where it switched. Um, I just didn't have a name for it at the time other than like, let's, let's do this. You know? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It, it's so funny. I love, you know, so much of like my research and experience and training has leaned back into like my young self. Like I think most people are their, you know, their core values, their innate being is who, how they are as little kids. So right. you must have had a very resilient spirit early on. And then you were kind of fast forward and shoved into these very like adult decisions. But intuitively, I think you can even look back and see this theme in your life where there's a problem at hand or there's an opportunity, however your mindset views it. And then you just take it on and you step through that. And I think that's the most important piece. I think not only for your single moms to hear, but anyone that regardless of what's in front of you, you have to kind of step through the gates and just approach it the best way you can and see what happens. Absolutely. I think that challenges or, you know, even things that we go through in our lives that may be traumatic, Um, they can either shape us into a person who can bring their A game or they can completely tear us down. And we have that choice. Everybody has that choice. Mm -hmm. Um, and certainly my, you know, growing up was my parents were teenagers as well, you know, so we kind of grew up together and I feel like sort of having to come through and always be, always be okay. Mm -hmm you know, rather than being detrimental, I I kind of value that because I think that is part of the core of who I am now and how I was able to take situations that could have completely destroyed me and just say, I don't have a choice. Like I refuse to be taken down. That's so well said. And it's, what's funny is, uh, so I'm the oldest, I have three younger brothers. Um, And relatively like typical childhood ish, you know, there's always things always look a certain way, but they're always usually different behind closed doors, but for the most part, pretty like suburban regular ish, um, parents divorced, but I was, I mean, they were young as well. I think my mom was 23 when she had me, my dad, 25. I don't, I can't believe I'm alive. If you knew them, I love them, but like (laughs) miracles happen. Um, they're wild animals as well. So that's definitely in the bloodstream, but it's, I think when you are, like you said, like you're a younger mom or you have younger parents, like there's so much, especially, you know, 20, 30 years ago, there's so much like people didn't know. And like, there's not access to like a lot of like parental coaching or guidebooks. And there's not really even now, but it's, it's so much of this figure it out mentality. And now I don't think our kids have that as much because as parents or as leaders or whatever, I don't have kids. I have three dogs. Um, it's, 
there's more access to information, but you, 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 they have different problems. They're exposed to social media. There's different issues. And so I think it's so great that they have people like you to look up to, to say, okay, my situation right now might be different, but the approach can be exactly the same. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I'm thankful there was not social media back then because I feel like the comparisons that are made these days, it would, it probably would have kept me or at least slowed me down in my journey for sure. But the main thing I want, um, the, the, the message that I want to get across to single moms is, you know, we can break the stigma. It doesn't have to be, um, something here is broken. So I think a lot of people look at, well, I'm a single mom. And so that means that my life is broken. And that means that my situation is broken and something's missing. And certainly, you know, it would be easier to not be a single mom, but in certain situations, I feel like I'm a much more well-rounded person now that I understand both sides. I was married for 15 years. I was also a teen mom. You know, I've been an adult single mom. Um, So I just want them to understand that there is no limits and they are not broken and their family is not broken Um, and that they can still be fulfilled and so can their children and their lives in the same way that it would if they had a partner. Mm -hmm. Take us through because your words are um, so poignant. I think whoever, I'm so faithful on this podcast, it's two people listening or 10 million. It's it's hitting the right people that need to hear exactly what my guests are saying. Um, So what's so great about your journey is like your words are completely exemplified by your journey. So take us a little bit more through how, so you're pregnant, you have your baby, Kimberly, and you get right into banking. And again, this is like first or second step, I should say, after having um, kiddo and making a choice to step away from victim mentality, but to take on the banking industry and work your way up through there. Like give us a little bit of process of like that journey. Cause I think some of those first steps are the hardest. Absolutely. Um, So, you know, in high school, I was kind of a, a screw off. I got, you know, bad grades, didn't go to class, all that sort of thing. Um, and so I had sort of a, what you would call, um, imposter syndrome. It was like, I'm not good enough to be something cool, (laughs) you know, to be something off or successful. Um, but I think once I had her, it, like I said, I put a lot of value on who do I want her to see her mom? as and who do I want her to see herself as and so I actually I got a break um I got a job with Wells Fargo when I was 18 um and I just felt like this is my big break this is it you know I have to make this work and I remember get some friends of mine getting ready for prom and it just the the contrast was so funny because you know they're worried about what dress they're gonna wear and what their date is and I'm like well you know I've got to figure out if, you know, what employees I'm going to schedule on Monday or whatever. Um, So I worked my way up to be a branch manager as a branch manager when I was 22. Um, I faced a lot of pushback on that. It was hard to have people my age now, you know, in their forties or fifties who were my employees. They, you know, it, it, it took a hard, it was a hard time for them to be respectful and that sort of thing. So it certainly wasn't a easy journey. Um, and it, I did have to prove myself, but I think it's sort of like the gym, right? You start out, um, you're, you're a little bit weak, right? You, you haven't, you haven't built up this strength yet. Um, and then after a while you get to a point where it just comes naturally. And so I think it was the same for me. I had to go through this process to kind of shape myself into someone who demands respect, who demands more for my life and more for my daughter's life. So it, you know, at first it was like, oh, you know, I'm apologizing for being me and I'm apologizing that I'm 22 and I, and I'm your boss. And after a while it was like, you know, yeah, F you. Together because <laughs> this is who I am and I'm not apologizing for it anymore. And I think that was a big turning point for me as well, was just embracing myself and who I am and making no reservations about it again, like huge life skills. And this is, people have to keep in mind, this is 20, 30 years ago. Uh, women have battled their way up in the ranks now, but we still see pay inequality, all things happening. 
30 years ago as a 22 year old in a male dominated industry is, I mean, you were put on point to blaze trail literally from like zero years old. Like these are really early things and like early adult conversations that, that, you know, on my podcast, I say God, universe, Madonna, whatever you believe are like, they're lining you up for like bigger things very sure. early on. So you get through banking industry. What point did EMT, when did we switch over to like more medical and the passion driven of EMT and all that situation? You know, honestly, that was kind of a turning point in my life. So I was married for 15 years and got divorced. I had two other children with my husband. Um, And so once we got divorced, my oldest daughter, Kimberly, I had homeschooled my kids for about eight years. And so she graduated early, um, went to college, met her now husband. And so she actually moved out of the house when she was 16. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. She was just like ready to go. And so I was left kind of like, well, now what? Um, Being a mom has been my whole life. And now it's me and my two kids. You know, I'm getting divorced. Um, I was terrified because I didn't know how I was going to provide for myself. I forgot how, you know what I mean? I felt like I forgot how. Um, And I also realized that I had a lot of residual trauma and damage from my earlier experience with being a teen mom and with being left on my knees in the driveway, begging, you know, this boy not to leave me. Um, and so a lot of that kind of got stirred up during that time. I had to do a lot of soul searching. Um, and so I got into EMT because it was the only time when I felt that the only thing that mattered was that moment. So I could kind of shut my brain down. Um, and just a quick side note. So in this, in the meantime here, I had done a lot of modeling and things like that. And, you know, modeling is great, but it's also not great for your, the ego. Yeah. And so I had sort of started to base my worth upon how I looked and how I was perceived. But when I was an EMT and I was there and somebody needed me and it was a literal life or death situation, they don't care what I look like. Um, <laughs> my worth to them is that I'm there for them in their worst moment. So it's really a, more of a healing process for me. Um, there's a quote that a lot of people say in EMT and it says, I didn't become an EMT, um, you know, so that people would respect me. It, I became an EMT because I realized that I was bleeding and the only way to stop the bleeding was to stop someone else's. Um, and that really resonated with me. So I think that was a step in my life that I had to take in order to kind of come away from those old thinking patterns and realize that there's so much more inside of the shell than a a smile or a pretty picture or a good mom or all of the images that I had made of myself that were now destroyed. I wasn't a suburban housewife. I wasn't married. You know, my family was, as I thought at the time, broken. I was broken, but none of that was true. I just had to kind of go through this process in order to discover that. That, That's really powerful. And I think that people can hear that and understand that healing can help from healing others. And even if you don't have access to like really intense formal therapy, or maybe your mindset's not even there yet, kind of just following your gut and your intuition and and listening, like the path will kind of lead you to a space. If you choose to heal or you choose to, to want to get better in some capacity, it's, it's amazing how you can heal in very different ways and, you know, opportunities will present itself. I still applaud your mindset because these are again, really hard things to lean into when, you know, especially when like old wounds, when you're really young, kind of become reopen to sure. navigate that and find a way and then see it as healing. How long were you an EMT for? Um, for about two years. So okay. I did a little bit of, it was mostly 911, um, working on the ambulance. I worked for, uh, with Aurora fire. And then I went out, the kids and I went on an adventure and we moved out to brush Colorado into this little farmhouse and decided to try the country life. And so I worked rural EMS at that point. Oh, wow. Okay. I think I kind of came into my own, um, and kind of owned that whole thing. So yeah, about two years and I'd still be doing it other than the fact that unfortunately it's not financially very lucrative. So I had to make some tough decisions, but I still feel that that was a big turning point for me in in understanding myself a lot better. 
Absolutely. And I love the 180 from modeling, which is a brutal industry. Oh, uh, I always, I always tell my kiddos, like, you got to follow your heart, but man, anything like acting Hollywood modeling, and now it's social media and I'm marketing branding. That's, I mean, I literally started this podcast to disrupt some of the, the messages that aren't true <laughs> um, and highlight like our real life influencers like you, because the, the industry and the mindset is so all consuming. So I love that you had that awareness to go from literally where an industry does put value to how you look. I mean, that's literally what it is to I, now it's a skill set and you're actually doing something. I hate to say it, that truthfully matters, saving lives and showing sure. up for people that when you need the most. So I think that's really deeply relevant in today's day and age, because social media is like, you're constantly comparing yourself to oh. models. And the brutal part now is it's not even models. These are not real humans. It's all filtered and edited and it's a whole different level. Um, Absolutely. I do want to hear a little bit more about this uh, farm life. I eventually want to have like land far away. So my dogs mostly can run like wild animals free and just like have space to get away. Um, but tell me what you learned about like just being away in the tornado chasing the paranormal. Like let's get into all these fun details. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. So like I said, that was kind of part of when life was changing for me. And I, I was like, what's next? Um, and I, just kind of, it just kind of got into my head. I drove through brush one day and I was like, you know what? I think I want to live here. So, <laughs> um, I don't know if I'd recommend this, but what <laughs> I honestly did was found a house, sign up for a house. I didn't even know where I was going to work. I had zero plan. It was just like, all right, pack up two weeks. We're moving to the country. Let's go. I went and bought a truck. Cause I was like, all right, I got to have a, I got a truck. I'm going to live on a dirt road. Um, and the kids and I just packed up and went, we went from, you know, suburbia to the middle of nowhere. We lived in a cornfield. Um, I had no one around me. The grocery store was 20 minutes away. Um, and I was a very sheltered housewife <laughs> for many years. So I, mean, I went from like, I don't take out the trash to, oh, there's a two foot snow drift. I'm going to freaking handle this. And we um, so yeah, I moved out there, started working for the ambulance service out there. Um, and like I had kind of told you, I just wasn't making enough money. And so I was walking down the street one day with the kids and I saw the newspaper and I thought, I really, I've always been a writer, you know, I've been in writing groups and things. And so I walked in just like, I just had this feeling and I was like, I'm going to write here. Um, and I said, Hey, uh, I, are you hiring a journalist? And they said, well, we, we actually are, um, do you have a degree? You know, where did you go to school? And I said, um, I'm a high school dropout. <laughs> so, um, I have my DD and, but I am a great writer and they kind of laughed me off and they said, well, you have to have a degree. And I said, well, here's the thing is I've gotten this far in life without a degree. So I said, here's a challenge for you. Give me the title of a news story. I'll teach myself how to write AP style. I will find a story that fits the title. And if you publish it, you have to hire me. Um, and so their editor, Bob, who became a good friend of mine later, um, he said, okay, here you go. And so he said, homeless for the holidays, have fun. Um, it's due on Friday. And so I went and sat in the park. I was really stoked because I'm really all about like helping homeless and understanding that they're like kind of dehumanized. And so I went and sat in the park. I met this man, his name was Floyd. We had a conversation and realized that he was actually this brilliant man who had made amazing accomplishments in his life. But like many of us, he had, you know, two, three, four, five things happen in a row that had landed him in this position. Um, and so I got, uh, I wrote a story on him. And the story ended up being the cover story for the newspaper and they hired me. So I ended up being, I'd work half the week. So I'd work 72 hours EMS. And then the rest of the week I would work for the newspaper. So it was kind of what, and it was really fun because I got to bring the kids with me for a lot of the news stories and quick fun story. We were driving down the highway or down the road one day and we saw a car accident. So I pulled over and I was like, oh, I'm going to go help, you know? And so I start running over to help and the kids roll down the window and they're like, mom, you're the news. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I am the news. I'm like, do I help or take a picture? I don't know what to do. Um, so it's kind of fun. But um, <laughs> to um, learn how to be independent and to kind of become the three amigos, like it's us against the world and we can kind of handle anything together. So that was a very fun experience for me. Um, that's where I got in the tornado chasing. I wrote a section called a day in the life. So to follow people with really fun jobs. 
and write about it. And I went with a tornado chaser. Um, and so I started chasing tornadoes and that summer we had three that hit brush in one day. Wow. Um, and so I went out and, and chased them and, and kind of got caught in it. And it was, it was like, I thought I might die, but it was the coolest feeling ever. <laughs> I kind of got addicted to it. So that's a quick synopsis of all of that. Wow. Well, I mean, as challenging as things are at minimum, you can say things have not been boring. Like, no, <laughs> what, what a right. Okay. So we're in brush. We've got all these eclectic things. I'm really curious, just on a quick note, what, tell me about the paranormal situation. Was this in brush as well? Um, okay. So I was watching ghost hunters one night and I was like, Hey, that looks kind of fun. And so I started doing it just like amateur, you know, we would like go just find an old abandoned place and try it. And so I saw it fast forward a couple of years down the road, I'm back here in town working in marketing and I'm scrolling through Facebook one day and I see that this paranormal team is hiring. And I was like, why the heck not? So, um, I applied for the position and they hired me. And so <laughs> I, I just randomly started doing it. Um, just as kind of like a passion project or I guess not a passion project, but just something fun that I like doing on the side. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of how I got into that. And that's been my mindset ever since I, you know, started trying all of these different things was how can I make a career out of things that set me on fire? And yeah. that was just part of it. Uh, and that's, that's what we need right now. When you talk about mental health of our world and happiness, I think it all kind of comes back to like identifying our own core values, what we actually care about, and then living amongst those and doing what we want to do and not this, you know, nine to five or this prescribed life that we think we needed to have. And it's ironic that back in the day, your view was like all the things I don't have, but now in reflection, I would look at it and think like, oh my God, look at all this freedom you did have and all these things you experienced versus like being, you know, married for 40 years, doing one job that you didn't love. Like it's, it's all about that perspective. And from my perspective, I feel like you've had these extraordinary opportunities and, and lived like an, an experienced life. Absolutely. I think that's true. Um, and I don't want to make it sound like it was easy because it certainly wasn't. Um, there was a lot of moments of what did I do? Um, and because it was my choice to get divorced because I knew I wasn't fulfilled and I was not living up to my purpose. Um, but that carries with it a lot of guilt. Um, so certainly there was a lot of dark days in there. I experienced an abusive relationship in that time, um, extremely abusive. And so, you know, it was certainly a struggle, but it's just finding the healing and finding how you can turn something bad into a stepping stone rather than, you know, be taken over by it. Yeah. So I think that's the lesson in all of it. Do you have good words of advice for someone that's maybe listening and they're like in it right now and they don't know, cause that step and changing a situation, I think, especially with kiddos, is has got to be really, really hard. Again, I don't have children, but I, I can't imagine being in that situation where you're not making a choice just for one person, but for multiple people that you're responsible for. Do you have like any good words of advice to someone that maybe that's in it that knows that they need to pivot, but just aren't sure how to do that first step? Sure. Um, well, you know, all of us have certainly been there at one time or another in one capacity or another. I think the main thing is to look at your limitations and I even wrote them down. I wrote down almost like I wrote a square, like this is the box that I'm in. And these are the things that I believe that are keeping me here. And then really looking at what of those things really are a limitation and what of those things am I just afraid of? Because, you know, like they say, everything we want is on the other side of fear. Nothing that we want is going to come easily. Um, and so looking at those things and figuring out, first of all, what of these limitations can I change and then doing it. So that's the main thing that I think people get stuck in is one day I'm going to do this someday when I'm ready, I'm going to tackle this, or I'm going to make this change, but you're never going to be ready. So you either do it in fear and conquer it or you stay where you're at. But the thing that stops most people, I think, is that they feel like they just have this infinite amount, if an infinite <laughs> amount of time. Yeah. And it's like, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow, but there might not be tomorrow. So I think when you get that 
in your head and you realize this is not a practice. This is not a trial run. This is my one life to live. And either I'm going to live it to the absolute max capacity or I'm going to die trying. Those are the two options that we have. Um, and thirdly, just believing, taking, taking all of your limiting beliefs about yourself and challenging them. So I believed that I was unworthy and less than. So I purposely put myself in a position where I was the boss, right? Because I can't believe I'm unworthy and have to be in charge. And so I put myself into situations that completely um, go against my beliefs so that I have to overcome them. So that's another thing that you can try um, if you're up for the challenge and you are, whether you believe it or not. <laughs> Boom. Oh, Amen. So well said. And I love the, the practice or the exercise of writing your limiting beliefs, like, but literally putting them in a box. I think that's really powerful. I should probably <laughs> practice that and see, because I think that's approachable to anything. And as we get older, it's, you do get more set in your ways and things like if it's comfortable or not, you get so in routine and the same friends. It's, it's not like how you are with kiddos. You like try and fail and fall off right. the tire swing and get up. Like it's, we have right. to consciously like have this disruption pattern as we get older. Cause we do get set into, um, our own spaces Absolutely. and I, whenever I'm, you know, formally or informally coaching, I kind of like what you said, when people get so wrapped up in the resume or my experience or what I graduate from, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, write down a list of everything that you've done. And like, there's, and I think when people look at that, they're like, oh shit, I've done so much. Like, absolutely. I love that. That's a brilliant idea. Well, huh. it's, it's, it's things you wouldn't put on like LinkedIn, but then you look at it. It's like, if I was hiring someone, I saw like some of my people's lists. I'm like, what put somehow include all this. Cause this is like really deep life stuff. For sure. You know, I was thinking about that actually before I came on the podcast because Mark was like, Hey, you know, you got to come on Kristen's podcast. You guys are going to be awesome, blah, blah, blah. And I immediately, when I'm asked to do something like this and I'm going to be really transparent, I'm like, why me? You know, like, why the heck does she want to talk to me? That's for, you know, I don't get it. She's like this, you know, strong woman, this like CrossFit lady. She's got her podcast. She's like this badass. Like what, what does she want with me? Um, and so I have to psych myself out by doing just what you said is, you know, like at my desk, I've got on the wall, all of these accomplishments I've made and I write myself little things like, Hey, by the way, you did this or you did that. Um, but I think that that's something we all have to overcome. And the way that we view ourselves, we have to realize isn't necessarily the way that other people view us. So um, even to be on this podcast, I had to kind of psych myself out like, all right, Vicki, you're pretty cool. Yeah. I was just like, just, just own it. Um, and so here we are. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm really glad you shared that because on the flip side, <clears throat> even when I was starting this out, I'm like, who the F is going to listen to it? What is turmeric and tequila? Mean? Like, I just felt called. And I, I say this for you and all my future guests and to all my past guests. I started this because in marketing and branding, and you know, this, you see so much smoke and mirrors and you see a lot of people with a lot of notoriety, you know, maybe that don't really have that important of things to say, but because of the way they look or because of the people they know they're launched into this. And my, and my mission isn't to like bring that those people or those situations down is to highlight the ones that are doing it, that are living it, that are, I say influencers, IRL in real life that are really living extraordinary lives. They just don't seek this influencer spotlight. But on the flip side, if all of our kiddos are consuming reality through their cell phones, right. someone has to shine the light on like really varsity humans doing varsity shit because that. that's, what's real. And that's, what's going on. So I have the same fears as a host. I'm like, who the F's going to listen? What's going What? So I, I like that you to share that. Cause like this constant mindset of like not being enough when, when new situations approach impacts yeah. all of us. I mean, it's, it's never not there. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. You know? Um, and I think that that's why we need to surround ourselves with people who have an overcoming mindset, um, and put ourselves in positions to meet those people, even if it's uncomfortable, because Absolutely that's going to be your cheerleaders. Those are going to be the people that hold you up. It's easy to surround ourselves with people who have limiting beliefs, who are in a negative mindset because it doesn't cause us to level up. Um, but you know, getting to know people like you, you know, when I'm checking out your podcast, I'm like, she's a beautiful, blonde. <laughs> like, this amazing podcast, you know, and easily I could have been like, Oh, whatever, you know, I'm not going to talk to her, you know, but instead I'm like, I want to be around people who are yeah. smarter 
than me. I want to be around people who are more successful than me. Even people who, this is something interesting, but I look at people who I might be jealous of or who I might dislike. And that's not you <laughs> at all. But you know, I, you. <laughs> I take people who I'm like, oh, you know, normally we would be like this, you know, this chick, you know, she thinks she's so cool. But I try to get to know those people because there's a reason yeah. that I'm triggered by them. And part of it is that they have something I don't, and maybe I can learn from them. Mm -hmm. So um, that's one thing that I try to do is I try to look at people that I might be kind of jealous of, or I might be kind of intimidated by or whatever. um, And rather than write them off or try to like, you know, put up my walls and be negative about them. It's like, okay, teach me something that, you know, that maybe I don't know. And we can be friends, you know, and I'm so powerful best friends of women that I, you know, I first meet and I'm like, oh, you know, and then now it's like, they're a totally different, amazing human than I ever. And I've learned and grown so much from knowing them. I love that so much. And that's such an important conversation, especially amongst women, because I'm really powerful about disrupting the narrative that, you know, women are catty or we're against each other, or blah, blah, blah. Because most of the time, society has put us like that is very much a prescribed reality. Like you see mean girls and all these things, right. like it's women versus women. And that's really how we are set up. And like the conversation is like, it's all competition about to us getting to getting a man or whatever. And right. like there's so much from society to unpack. So I love when I see women helping women. And really having that awareness, because anytime you do feel that jealous or envy, and I'm reading um, Brene Brown's Atlas of the Heart right now, she talks about like those terms. Yeah, you'd love it. I really recommend it. I'm I'm not a good reader, so it's taking me forever, but I strategically like gave a book to each of my two of my best friends and like we're reading it together. So it holds me accountable. Um, But it's really good practice, like understanding, like if I feel something that's personal intel of like my own insecurity or my own imposter syndrome or whatever, like let's lean into that. And what you do is so fabulous of like leaning in understanding because you might miss out on like some of the best friends of your life or boyfriends or relationships are like really important things that are meaningful. Oh, for sure. I think, um, you know, the way that a lot of us navigate life is like, well, I'm triggered by this person or this situation. So that means something's wrong with them. That means something's wrong with that. No, that means something's wrong with me. Yeah. I haven't faced yet. Maybe not wrong with me, but there's some growth and a growth opportunity that I have. Um, and I even look at that a lot in my relationship, you know, um, Mark and I are both fiery people. We're both intense, we're both passionate. Um, and so it would be easy to let that be a, a problem, but, you know, we've helped each other so much to grow just in recognizing that, um, you know, and in recognizing that when somebody makes me feel insecure, they can't make me feel any way feeling insecure because I need to do some more work. And we all have continual work to do for our whole lives, but you know, the stronger the people are in your lives and the more we can build kind of a village around ourselves that we all need, then the better off we'll be. And that takes an open heart and that takes courage. Absolutely. Um, I think a lot of us have a lot more courage than we would like to admit if we would just you know, take our egos down a couple notches and just say, I'm going to, I'm going to be open to situations and people. I agree. And that's hard. Cause again, we're in a society, like we don't really, you can kind of grow up, get a job, stay in your house, do your, or like do like your routine. And you don't really have to have courage to do very much. So then the smallest things become big things. So I love your mindset of like this constant improvement, constant calling yourself out. And I think even the takeaway there is just having grace in that, like we're constantly learning, like you're constantly not going to be good at something or not know everything or not be the best in the room. It's just about getting around people that are better than you. And that's one of my big things in life is like, whoever you are around will be you. It doesn't matter how grounded you are. I can look down like the big breakdowns in my life. And when I was like at my lowest and I'm like, I look at my environment I'm like, well, of course I was like that. Like, look who you were around, what you were doing, like how against my core values it was. So it's like this constant, like self-assessment. Oh, for sure. So, so now that we've done all this, and um, even if you've done the work in self-assessment, I feel like you are very like, uh, have this deep self-awareness, even as a young person. So it's within you. So I love to see you on camera out there, like on podcasts, like in the social media 
um, world where there's, where people can see and hear you in some capacity, even through your like creative projects. Cause I think it's really important that people like you are out there in front of, and on like the camera and through like our cell phones again. So it's reaching everybody and in particular our young people, but tell me about Buckshot Media, like everything, all the success that's right now. I see some of the TikTok, which I'm, I was laughing with Mark. I'm like, I got to lean into TikTok. I just came from this podcast for this podcast conference and like videos, everything. And I'm like, God damn it. One more social media thing I have to do, <laughs> but I actually kind of like the video and it's so casual, but your guys are pretty varsity. So tell me about the company and everything that's going on now. Yeah, for sure. So, um, Buckshot Media, I kind of started from ground zero. So, you know, I won't go into it, but I've had several times in my life that I've had to start from scratch. Um, and very recently in about the last year, I, I found myself in a situation where I was starting from scratch again. So we're talking ground zero, zero money in the bank, no job, um, no idea what the heck I was going to do. And I was sitting there and I said, you know, um, I'm going to revamp my marketing company to be representative of who I am. Um, and I think that's what was stopping me was I was trying to do marketing for things that I don't believe in for things that I can't get on board with. And I said, okay, so I'm going to make this outdoor marketing company and it's like do or die, sing or swim. This is it. Um, so I came up with Buckshot Media. I started reaching out to outdoor brands that I felt were way out of my league because I figured, you know, why not? Um, and so I reached out to Rugged Legacy, which is a, a large apparel brand. Um, I reached out to their CEO and I kind of did the same thing I had done with the newspaper. I just said, hey, these are some of the things I've done. This is me. Hire me. Um, and he called me up at 5 a.m. one day. He lives in Spain. He said, get on the phone in an hour. Uh, I got on the phone and then I was uh, I was their brand manager leader that day. So that's what got me started with that. And um, <laughs> um, that's what got me started. I started working with, we worked with some other big names like Duck Dynasty. Uh, we have, we're just starting to collaborate with some other people, Black Rifle Coffee. Um, we're in talks with Meat Eater and different things like that. So, um, but the main premise of Buckshot Media is one, live your dream, live your passion, um, have the courage to do it. And two, my staff and the people that I hire are single moms. And that is my goal. Um, I bring in a lot of single moms for events and things, and I have to push them. You know, we have to get up on stage with bands um, and get on the microphone in front of big crowds and rile the crowd up. And they're like, oh my gosh, I can't do that. You're going to do it, right? I'm just going to be in the background. <laughs> and uh, no, honey, you're not. You're going to be right up here with me. Um, and they hate me for it. But then they start to realize that they are worthy and they can do scary things and they have more courage than they think. Um, and so that's my goal with Buckshot Media is to hire single moms, teach them skills where they can be self-employed if they want, teach them things like how to interact with different groups of people, all of those sort of skills that we need in life. Um, and then of course, teach them skills in the outdoors because, you know, fending for yourself or facing your fears. Um, and that's something coming down the pipeline we're kind of talking about. I won't give away too much about it, but we're chatting about a possible upcoming show. As you know, Mark and I work on reality shows. Um, we're working on a show possibly coming up that may be titled Buckshot Beauties. <laughs> yes. Okay. You know, the, the premise is going to be, I want to bring single moms on this show at, you know, I'm terrified to climb a 14 or well, girlfriend get in. Cause that's exactly what we're going to do today. Um, and let's do this. So that's some of the exciting things coming up with Buckshot Media. I, I love all this. And for anyone listening, single moms, especially, but everybody, I think it's a really critical pivot point. I'm actually kind of in this as well. And it's funny because my podcasts are here for like for our young people, but every time I sit down with someone, it's like some healing experience for me. So it's not intentional, but like, it's, it just lines up that way. But, um, of the switching of the mindset and of doing what you actually love who, and, and representing who you actually are, I think is a pivot point for most people as we get older. Like I was doing all this marketing branding stuff and like, I'm just now falling back in love with like fitness and the core of my soul. Like that's like the love of my life. Like it's, I, I have to do this conversation with Tom Brady, like has this model wife and millions at home. And like, all he wants to do is play football. I feel yeah. like if, 
opportunity and we're totally the same clearly minus the millions in the models but like my fitness and my heart has always been there but I just I'm just now getting back to it so I think that's a major takeaway that you said like doing something that actually represents who you are like that's the gold I think universe will keep blocking you and keep you kind of penniless and and off yeah. off out of alignment until you really like cling hold to like what what do I actually give a shit about what I represent and start doing something around that Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Nothing worked out for me when I was trying to be someone that I wasn't. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. And also, you know, just believing like, you know, sometimes I make decisions and I'll do something that people think is nuts. Like, oh yeah, I went and signed up for this house out in the country and it's like, what are you doing? Well, sometimes we just have to do something to push us to be the person that can have that. You know what I mean? So I'm going to be a business owner. Do I, am I ready? No, but I'm going to just do it because then I have no choice, but to level up. Um, and I noticed that in you, just like the first time I talked with you over the phone, I'm like, this girl knows who the heck she is and she's doing what she wants to do. And I can feel, I know you're passionate about this and that comes across, you know? And so just when you come into that ownership, your energy just attracts more and more of like-minded people. Yes. <clears throat> um, thank you. I really appreciate that because there's so many days where you are questioning things, even your firm and your beliefs. It's constantly like putting yourself out there is really hard, like dating or business or whatever. Like it's just this constant breakdown, breakthrough in that practice, you get better at it, but you're never great at it. And that's good because then you're, you're constantly evolving, but it's, it's really hard to be out there and it's hard to figure it out. Like it took me a lot of time and I'm still figuring out like to find that path. I mean, right. we're in, I, I think your thirties, forties, like it took us this much time to like get into what we should be doing. And also back in the day, I always tell this to my young people, what you're going to be doing might not be a thing yet. There wasn't podcasting when I was in high school. It's like, I want to be a podcaster. I'm going to have, you know, this career. And like, some, like sometimes you just have to keep showing up and have these breakdowns and breakthroughs to like, let the path kind of line itself out yes. and it, it, it puts you in, in a point. So you kind of have to let go and just surrender to the process, which is really effing hard. Oh my God. It's so hard. <laughs> I think everyone's like, oh yeah, life's a journey and you do this, then you do that, then you do that. Then you do that and then that's how it goes. And it's like, um, I think people are always waiting to arrive at this point where everything comes together. And it's like, you're never going to arrive at that point. It's an ongoing journey and each, each path leads to the next and the next and the next. So I think young people, especially if it seems like they're starting to realize that I know my generation was like, okay, you graduate, you go to college, you get married, you get a dog and two and a half kids and you do this, you know? <laughs> um, and so it, I'm seeing that in young people. I'm really proud of young people these days because it seems like they're starting to understand one, there isn't a norm. There isn't like, you have to be this one thing to be successful, to be deemed successful. And two, life is just an up and down. It's constant journey. It's not A to Z. Um, and so I'm really encouraged in seeing that. And I want to continue to encourage young people these days um, and especially young women to embrace the fact that life really is a journey and it's different for everybody else. It doesn't always have to look the same. Absolutely. Amen. And I have to ask you because times are changing so fast, <clears throat> I'm assuming, and tell me if I'm wrong, when you say single parents, it's usually like if they chose to be divorced or they were never married, but like, it's, it sounds like it's not by choice. Um, but nowadays I have several friends that are choosing, you know, in vitro or, um, sperm donors, like having kids on their own in general, like, are there two categories of single moms where it's like, not by choice, by choice. Like, I'm assuming you want everybody, but has that conversation shifted where it's like, this happened. I didn't know how to do it versus like, I intentionally chose this path. Um, certainly not. You know, I intentionally became a single mom the second time around. So I've been a single mom twice, you know, single mom as a teen. And that certainly was not my choice, but you know, after I realized that my marriage was not, um, you know, I was kind of stuck and I was in limbo and I would never reach a potential unless I left. And I'm not saying everyone should leave their marriages, but sure. you know, having the courage to say, I'm making a choice against the easy route. I'm making a choice against what everyone else is doing and be okay with that. That's the courage that we need to have. And just to own that. And your kids will see that, you know, my kids look back and they're like, wow, mom, you know, at first we thought you were kind of selfish. We thought, you know, why is she doing this? Why is she making these choices. And now they look back and they say, the person that you are now is unrecognizable to the person that you were when you were married. And so certainly making a choice to be a single parent is no different than being 
you know, not having that choice, we have to take the same steps and we have to have the same amount of courage either way. It's just whether or not we anticipate it coming or not. And I think that's the difference. And I think that's leadership. Like at any point you have to be the leader that makes a choice that maybe the whole team isn't going to understand quite yet. You've got to make the best choice you can for the team. And that's, and if that means taking care of the leader or self-preservation, like that's part of it. So um, you, you're, you're such a, you're a remarkable example of resilience. And I love that you're a strong female. I love that you have young females in your household or, or have birthed them. Um, but I love to see this ripple effect and I will make an unsolicited uh, <laughs> consultation. I think you should do your own reality show and put it out there maybe in due time. I don't know if you and Mark have talked about that, but like showcasing like the journey or maybe you do your own podcast. I don't know. I would just love for you to share your story even more. Cause I think it, it's just so phenomenal. I think for our young people, particularly young women to hear and see it. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for that. I definitely, if there's some stuff in the works with that, you know, I'm working on that course to kind of help people that are in abusive situations and things like that to come out on the other side and you know, being able to work one-on-one with women who might be in that situation and coaching and things like that. So it's definitely something coming down the pipeline um, when I can find all of the hours in the day to right. happen. <laughs> That, that's a whole other podcast, but it's real to like prioritize and get out there. But I'm so glad to see that opportunities coming in and that you're right on time um, for society. Like it's like the doors more open as has, has ever been. There's of course, you know, still some barriers to be broken down and some glass ceilings to break. And the beautiful side of social media is accessibility, the ability to reach anyone and everyone. There's massive responsibility with that, but like we're right on time for our varsity humans, our game sh- ch- changers, our trailblazers to really step into the light and, and show it their way because there's avenue to do so. So it's an exciting time to be exactly where we're at, right. to have a voice and to share the journey because it's never been as open as it has been until right now, like literally with social media, but like also people's mindsets. We've seen so much like yes. disruption, you know, with social change and COVID and um, right. it, it's an exciting time. There's a lot of hard things going on, but there's an, ex- it's an exciting time. If you can switch your perspective slightly of seeing some of this like major change happening right in front of our eyes. Oh, for sure. I mean, and it's the perfect time for people who people to share their journeys and that, you know, a lot of people say, well, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to put my stuff out there. I don't, I just want to like keep my little social media presence. Mm-hmm. And this, you know, this is my perfect life, but that doesn't do anyone any good, especially yourself. Like, um, and so, you know, this is the perfect time to share your journey with everybody else and to just own it and be proud of it. The more of us that can be vulnerable and can say, Hey, you know, I'm doing, I suck today, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this day is horrible. Um, and to be able to reach out. So I would just encourage everybody to utilize the tools that we have in social media rather than to create this perfect image to open up and just invite in people to be part of your journey because that's what we all need. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, men. Um, and I can't wait to uh, hear more about this course. So please keep me posted on that. But yes. final question I will ask you, and I asked a lot of my guests uh-huh. seeing this resilient path and this, you know, kind of crazy journey thus far, would you change any single piece of it? No, <laughs> yeah. that sounds nuts, but you know, I've even thought of some of my worst days and I would relive them again because I certainly would not be at this point if I hadn't conquered those days. And that's the one thing I'll leave everyone with. Um, if you're in the time period where maybe today is your worst day, maybe yesterday was, maybe tomorrow is, um, we don't know, but what you believe today, feelings aren't always facts. Um, and it may seem like it's impossible and it may seem like this is how it's always going to be, but I'm going to promise you it's not, you don't know what's around the bend. Um, and so just keep going, keep your head up. Um, and be open, invite people to walk that path with you that can help you, um, and believe in yourself, believe that it's going to be okay. I promise you it's going to be okay. There's been many days where I didn't think so, um, but here we are. So keep going. Um, there you have it. 
I, I love feelings aren't always facts. I'm definitely going to write that down. I think that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, really... I have to remind myself that about every hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I don't know. There's, there is no, like the, like you said, the high low days, like it's very real all the time. And there's very, um, humble moments. I think that continue to keep us grounded. Um, yeah. but I'm excited. I'm excited to see this, the community that starts to follow you because single moms, but female leaders, people that took an alternative path, which is so many of our young humans at this point, uh, yes. I'm excited to see like the following that grows around you. So I will definitely keep tabs of that, but where do we find you hit us with website, social media, anything you want to share? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you want to see more of my personal journey, you can follow me on Facebook. Um, uh, Vicki Severson, you can just add Vicki Severson. Um, and you can also follow Buckshot Media on either uh, Facebook or Instagram. I do. Um, I'm very open. I'm very personal. You're going to get to hear the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I would love to interact with you guys on a daily basis and just kind of keep you covered keep each other accountable and encouraged. Boom. Um, again, I, I'm so excited to see where this journey kind of goes. And I really champion your vulnerability and putting it out there and just being so real and honest. It's such a refreshing breath, as you know, in the marketing space, particularly in health and wellness and, you know, lots of smoke and mirrors. So I'm so glad you're bringing the reality to reality <laughs> TVs and situations and, um, <laughs> and, and just kind of showing it all. Cause that's what we need. So, uh, perhaps in like six months or a year or something, we can check back in and, and see what's, what's new and what's growing. Totally. I would love to. And I'd love to keep up with you um, and your awesomeness as well. So definitely honored to become a new friend with you. Um, friend of turmeric and tequila going to be listening to all of your upcoming episodes. So um, go us, go team. Yes. And everybody, everybody out there, just keep on going and do something awesome. I want to hear about it too. So wow. reach out, check out what Vicky's going on, has going on. Um, Vicky, I appreciate your time and energy and let's chat again soon. Absolutely. Thank you for joining Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Tune in next time and don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen.